Hey, mountain friends. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's having a great day so far. I'm going to get right into uh, our biscuit making. I want to show you guys uh, a biscuit recipe that I discovered several years ago, and I want to share it with y'all because it really and truly only is, uh, it's just two ingredients, okay? And these are really good biscuits. They're very fluffy, they're very light, and there's not a lot of fuss to them. So if you're one of them people, and maybe you've tried to make biscuits over and over, you maybe you see me make some of my biscuits with lard and buttermilk, and you roll them out or whatever, or maybe you just say, well, my biscuits are always hard. Try these biscuits, okay? Um, this is really a good recipe, and it's simple and that's what I like too. And and it only uses two cups of self-rising flour and that's it. And I love Hudson cream. Hudson cream is my favorite flour that I use. So I'm using Hudson cream self-rising flour and you're only going to need one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. Okay. That's all there is to this biscuit recipe. And I get mine in Aldi but it needs to be heavy whipping cream, okay? It can't be regular milk. Uh, it has to be heavy whipping cream because most traditional biscuit recipes has some kind of lard or fat, you know, like a fat content in it and usually buttermilk or something. Uh, but you don't need that lard or that butter for this recipe because heavy whipping cream basically has all your fat in it because butter is made from heavy whipping cream. Um, and so it's all there. So you don't have to, so it's just two ingredients. So it's really easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with it. Now you need, these bake really hot and fast. So my oven is preheated to 500, okay? And um, it they really do bake up really quick. About, uh, only about 10 minutes is all it takes them to bake up. So I'm gonna start out. All you do is just put your flour in your bowl. Y'all look at my bowl. I wanted to show you all share with y'all this bowl a little history about this bowl i've had it probably for about 25 years um there was an old lady that lived down the, the road from where i was raised and um and when she passed away they had like a yard sale or like an estate sale and uh, so so let me put my first cup in there oh and before i finish my story let me tell you guys um always make sure you don't over when you measure out flour you always which most people should know this uh you want to measure it out and you don't want to shake it or pack it in i just take my finger and level it off and the hudson cream is so soft and light and you don't have to sift a lot of times with biscuits sometimes you got to sift your flour and to get it good you don't have to do that i mean it's really the lightest silkiest flour I've ever used, just saying. But anyway, anyway, um, the old woman's name was Georgie Taylor. Her name was Georgia. And where I'm from, anybody's name was Georgia, they called him Georgie. And I had Aunt Georgie too. But anyway, she passed away and they had, um, you know, they did like an estate sale. And this bowl was in that yard sale. And I think I might've paid a dollar for it. But anyway, I love it. And I love bowls. I love old timey looking bowls. So this is, look at that. And it's even got a chip. It had a chip, I didn't care. And I can't tell, it's got some kind of like writing on it, but I can't tell. But it's untelling how old it is. And this was in the eighties when I was probably in my, uh, no, yeah, late, early nineties. I was in my early twenties and she passed away and she was, uh, she had a, big beautiful house there and a lot of pretty stuff and this is a bowl that I got from there and um so it's not telling how old it is but it's an heirloom I'm sure but I love bowls so I wanted to share that with y'all okay let's go put our cream in okay um so it's just one and a half cups and and also let me like let you guys know these kind of measuring cups are for dry ingredients so if you are going to be measuring liquids, uh, try not to measure liquids in one of these. This is a cup measurement, but it's for dry, dry ingredients like flour and stuff. And wet ingredients, you usually need some kind of uh, like a Pyrex or this kind of little um, 
measuring bowl that I have or measuring cup that that is this is only usually for liquid so that's all because there is a little difference I don't know why but there is but so this is one and a half cups of heavy whipping cream I'm just going to eyeball it right there it's one and a half cups so you're just going to pour it right in I made like a little well pour it right in and and you're just gonna stir it together, okay? Stir it together until it's just combined. And then you're going to put it out, put this dough out on a floured surface and you're just gonna pat them out with your hands about probably like a half inch thick and you're gonna cut them out. So you're just gonna stir it until it's mixed. You don't over stir, okay? And now a lot of secrets to biscuits, if you've heard me say it, um, you don't over, you never over need, you don't really need biscuits. You don't like overwork them because that's what makes them tough. You need like rolls and breads and those kind of things, but you don't need biscuits. So that's it. Now it will look really stiff and that's okay. And you just want to get it all kind of stirred to where it's all not, you don't see any pieces of your, um, uh, dry pieces of flour okay so now i'm just going to set this aside and when we come back i want to flour the surface and i'll show you how to cut them out all right now i'm going to show you all i'm going to use my 10 inch cast iron griddle uh to bake these on and i'm just using some butter here and you can use salted or unsalted butter it don't matter and i'm just going to put this on bottom of my skillet here. Now this doesn't make a big batch, maybe six biscuits at the most. And you can most certainly double this recipe if you want to. And I'm just gonna butter that and set it over here on the side. And you don't brush them with butter until they come out after they've baked a little, when they, when they're done, just um, brush them with a little bit of salted butter or unsalted butter, it really don't matter. And so I'm just gonna flour my surface here. And so I'm just gonna turn my dough out. Just like that. Yeah, and this is really stiff, but it's okay. It's really stiff because of that high fat content in the uh, cream. So now all you're gonna do is you're just going to make sure you got some flour on your hands and you don't have to mess with these at all. You're just literally going to form it like in a ball <clears throat> and just pat them, pat them down to about a half inch thick or ever how thick you want them. And I'm just gonna do it like that right there. Yeah, okay. Now, if you want the biscuits to have soft sides, let your biscuits touch. If you want them to be kind of have like crispy edges, don't touch them don't don't let them touch on your skillet just separate them okay so you're going to do that right there and that's about the right thickness let me get my jar i'm just going to use my old little glass. I, I don't use biscuit cutters, y'all. I just use glasses or jars to cut out, because that's how my mamma did it. And y'all recognize this little glass? Look at that. If you recognize this glass, let me know. Uh, it's old. I will tell you that. It was my mamma's. If you all ever seen a glass like that. I'm just curious. I can tell you about it, but I'm curious if anybody recognizes this little glass. Look at that. Because it was my mamma's. I'll give you that hint so you can tell me. I'm pretty sure uh, everybody kind of know 
recognize this little glass. So, all right, I want to just go straight down and you don't twist, okay? You don't twist. When you cut biscuits out, um, rolls or biscuits, you don't twist, okay? You And you cut them as close as you can. Just go straight down and back up, okay? Get it to come out. So as you can see, this is a, see? Because if you don't, if you twist your biscuit, uh, you could seal the edges and make it not rise as good, okay? So I'm just gonna cut these all the way around. And it's a little easier, there we go, with a cutter than using a glass, but I don't care. No biggie, so go all the way around and cut. So any leftover dough, I'm going to make, I'm going to roll it again, but you only want to do that about twice because the more you fool with this dough, the tougher it'll get and you don't want tough biscuits, okay? So I'm just gonna show you all this batch. So you take this other, just your other piece of dough here and just gently, you probably get maybe one more biscuit out of it and just gentle form it together. Let's just do one more biscuit. There we go. One more. So there you go. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight biscuits out of this. So it's going right in the oven just like they are. And about 10 minutes or so, just keep an eye on them. They're gonna they're gonna raise really hot and fast. So just keep an eye on them. And when we come back, I'm gonna show y'all what they look like. They're gonna be so good. All right, y'all. Look at those biscuits. Don't they look good? Now this is a perfect kind of recipe. If you are not a fan of really thick biscuits and you like your biscuits to be a little thinner, then this is the perfect recipe. If you don't like those big fluffy cat head biscuits, um, and some people don't, they like a thinner biscuit. This is the perfect recipe. And I just take my butter like that right there and brush on them while they're hot and just let it just melt in there and get so good. Oh, these are gonna be so good, y'all, with some chocolate gravy. These are good with honey. These are good with just butter by itself, jelly, a good old, or some apple butter, some fried apples. <laughs> the possibilities are endless with these kind of biscuits, y'all, I'm telling you. But this is a easy, no, fail recipe I think and if you are if you want to try your hand at these I think you'll have good success with them because I've always had really good success with them so all right look at that y'all so I'm going to show y'all how I make chocolate gravy I'm going to make it the way my mom always made it I make it a little different normally than she did. I add milk and a little vanilla to mine, but I'm gonna show y'all how to make just classic chocolate gravy the way I was raised making it, uh, the way my mom made it. And um, it's really easy. I do have a recipe for chocolate gravy uh, under my photo section and my, on my page and in the album titled Recipes is a recipe for chocolate gravy. But I'm gonna show you all how my mom always made it and pretty much growing up in the mountains of Southeast Kentucky, this is how everybody made it. They didn't put milk in it or butter or vanilla. It just it was just flour, sugar, and cocoa and water. 
pretty much. So in my cooker, and we called them cookers growing up, we didn't call them saucepans, um, I'm gonna put in about two heaping, probably tablespoons of flour, and this is self-rising flour. I'm gonna turn my uh, burner on here. I'm gonna start just putting everything together. And this is literally how my mom always made it, okay? And I'm gonna put just about, only about that much of cocoa, not a lot. Stir that together. And I'm gonna put in my sugar. I don't put a lot of sugar to start because I like to do sugar to taste. And I'm just gonna add in my water. Okay, and I most certainly will be adding in some more. And this is how my mommy made it, y'all. So everybody's freaking out that I've got my uh, burner on and I've already mixed everything together. That's really how we always did it. And it was always my favorite. My sisters, me and my sisters, I have two older sisters. And in the summertime, we got chocolate gravy just about every day for breakfast. Chocolate gravy or cream of wheat or oats or rice and butter and sugar. Um, Mom would make us either either of those or this chocolate gravy. Most of the time we asked for chocolate gravy. And we had fried bologna most of the time for breakfast. Sometimes we'd have like, we killed hogs every year. So we'd always have either uh, fresh, like we'd have sausage. Uh, or pork chops or something, but mama most of, most of the time fixes some chocolate gravy, some eggs, and some fried bologna, and make us some biscuits or toast, and that's what we ate for breakfast, uh, usually every morning on in the summer. And this is already starting to come together because it don't take it long, and, and I'm not making a lot, so I've never really done a written recipe. I've always just watched mom make it, and through the years, I added milk to mine. Instead of using water, I would use milk, and I'd add maybe some butter or a little bit of vanilla. And that just made it taste a little more richer. Um, but the classic way was this way. And my, my mom's sisters always made it. We used to go stay on out with our cousins a lot. And if we went to stay on out with my cousins, my mom had um, quite a few sisters. And they had girls, so we had we had a lot of girls in our family. So a lot of my cousins were really close to me. We were like sisters. And growing up in the mountains, uh, I mean, you were like that. It was just a close knit family. But anyway, we go stay all night with our cousins, and our aunts would make us girls the same thing because they made their girls the same thing. And I taught Kenzie how to make this, and she loves it. And my nephew, my sister's son, he, uh, he's in his early 30s. He still likes this. So this is how we like to do our chocolate gravy. This is just the old-fashioned one. So I'm just going to let it thicken, and it don't take it long. And when we come back, I will show you all how I like to eat my chocolate gravy. So I want to show you guys, if it gets a little thick, which it will, just start adding water to it and just keep stirring it with a whisk and it will get to the right consistency that you like. And that's all I do. As, I, as it starts to thicken, I just keep adding water till it's, till it's the way that I like it. And that way, and it's smooth and it's not too thick and not too thin. So that's all I did just now and it's pretty much the way that I like it right there. All right, y'all, so the biscuits are done. I want you all to look at them right there. These are cream biscuits, two ingredients, just self-rising flour and heavy cream. And this is the perfect recipe. Uh, if you don't like really big, thick biscuits, let me show y'all. They just literally, they're flaky and they come apart. Look at that. And they're good. They're so good. And I, they're just... They're good, that's all I can say. They're the perfect, easy recipe. If you're looking for a good uh, biscuit recipe, then try these, y'all. So I'm just gonna set them right here because they're hot. And I wanna show you all. See, I got it all 
separated here, I'm gonna put me some chocolate gravy on this biscuit. Now, chocolate gravy, just a favorite of ours, y'all. Now, this biscuit is uh, perfect for like making like a biscuit sandwich, a sausage biscuit, because it just usually comes apart in two pieces. Um, really good with honey, jelly, whatever you want. And, but I like my chocolate gravy, y'all. I just do, and I, I like a little butter on mine when I put it on there. And it's time to eat. Oh gosh, can't wait. <laughs> so look at that. I just take my butter and the, everything's hot and let it melt. And it's so good. So I get me a bite, a big bite. I won't get too big a bite. I don't want too big a bite. I don't want to stuff my mouth. It's going to be good. Mmm. Lordy mercy. So good. Perfect biscuit, y'all. I'm telling you, it's good with gravy, too. Whatever you want. Some sausage gravy. It's good. So I hope you make it. So let me just pick one up again and show y'all. These are not like super uh, super thick if you're more of a fan of a thinner biscuit they're perfect for that and they just peel right apart and i like the tops of them because mm. and they're just good to bite in and eat by themselves too so but i like the tops of them too because they got that they're kind of crispy these are good y'all so they're easy. So hope you try these. If you do, let me know. I will post the recipe for these. Go under the photo section of my page. If you go at the top of Mountain Cooking with Missy, you'll see photos. If you click on those photos, you're gonna see albums. And then you're gonna see the album that's titled Recipes. I post pictures of my recipes. So that way you can just tap them with your phone. You can save them. So they're really, it's really easy and you just tap them. You can see every, all the full recipe. So that's how I upload them. That's all really the only way I know how on this page, but this is really simple. And, um, so maybe if you've tried biscuits before and you just say, Hey, my biscuits never turn out, try this recipe and see how it works. Okay. But it's so good. And I just wanted to show y'all the quick chocolate gravy, um, method, how I was taught to make them, to make it. And, I just love it with these biscuits. Mm. Only thing make it even better if I had a good old piece of burnt fried bologna. That's just me. <laughs> all right, guys. I thank you all for watching. So share the video. I appreciate it. Let me know where you're watching from when you watch it. Uh, if you make these, let me know. I'd appreciate that. You guys are awesome. I hope y'all have an amazing day. So thank y'all for watching Mountain Cooking with Missy, where it's nothing fancy. It's just good eating. Bye, guys.